thank you for this invitation. It's a pleasure to present you our recent um, studies on post-COVID ME CFS. And um, uh, we actually at Charité have um, a long-standing experience in post-infectious ME CFS. And uh, more recently, we um, study um, post-COVID patients clinically and um, uh, do research within our post-COVID network. And um, I'm going to talk about our observational study um, to analyze if MECFS is part of the post-COVID syndrome and one of the uh, sub-studies on the potential role of G protein coupled receptor autoantibodies in post-COVID syndrome. So um, patients with post-COVID syndrome present with a plethora of um, symptoms, many of them resembling um, um, MECFS or chronic fatigue syndrome. And among them, the key symptoms um, of fatigue, of exertional intolerance, and brain fog. So um, we uh, performed uh, prospective observational studies, um, seeing patients presenting with these three key symptoms and um, uh, analyzing these patients in a team of um, interdisciplinary physicians for potential comorbidities, um, assessing symptom severities, doing various um, laboratory studies, and um, looked for the presence of MECFS using the Canadian consensus criteria. And the study was just published last week in Nature Communications. And the main finding of the studies is that COVID can indeed trigger MECFS and very similar to MECFS we um, have known uh, for a long time triggered by other um, infections um, like EBV. And uh, it's mostly in patients following so-called mild COVID. Uh, however, um, looking at these uh, criteria of fatigue and exertion intolerance, we could um, define another post-COVID subset with very similar symptoms. And the main difference is that they had a shorter post-exertional malaise. Um, for those who are not familiar with MECFS, that um, describes um, that even minor exertion can lead to um, disease aggravation lasting per definition in MECFS at least until the next day. And in this other subset, um, patients uh, reported on having exertion intolerance as well, but this usually um, was shorter and they usually recovered um, within the same day. So this patient group um, uh, were younger people um, with a predominance of females and they were quite sick. So 50% of these patients um, were unable to work. The first time we saw these patients was at month six after infection. We've been following these patients now for more than two years and um, we couldn't actually um, change um, the disease course um, with the symptomatic treatment. So many of them are still very sick and the most severe um, of them are um, bedridden and um, the presentation and the disease course is very similar to our other post-infectious MECFS patients. So um, coming to the um, role of um, the G protein coupled receptor autoantibodies, we have been interested in these antibodies in MECFS for many years. Um, they are fascinating because they are natural regulatory antibodies. So we all do have them and most of them are agonistic. So they stimulate the receptors they target. We know now that they are dysregulated in many diseases. And um, if we have altered levels, this may either indicate a homeostatic response to receptor activation or uh, indicate autoantibody dysfunction. In MECFS, we know that beta-2 receptor adrenergic antibodies are elevated in a subset and are dysfunctional. Um, and um, we uh, did a recent study showing that they correlate well with severity of symptoms and first trials also uh, provides evidence that um, autoantibody depletion is effective in MECFS and post-COVID syndrome and leads to a sustained um, a drop of beta-2 adrenergic receptor antibodies. 
So the study uh, we performed in the post-COVID patients, and we just published this study as well in Frontier's Immunology, um, is straightforward. So we analyzed levels of um, a total of 20 G protein coupled receptor antibodies in these two cohorts of post-COVID um, symptom patients. Um, and in healthy controls, um, those who had COVID but uh, completely recovered and those who never had COVID. And these antibodies um, do target uh, various receptors. And um, to um, cut it um, short, um, the main function of um, these receptors is um, to control the cardiovascular symptom and to control inflammatory pathways. So what did we see? We found um, uh, that several of these antibodies are dysregulated. Um, so that uh, network connections were altered. Some of these antibodies were actually lower in post-COVID patients. And the most striking finding is that we found that they do correlate with symptom severity. Um, this is depicted here in this um, figure for fatigue. And what you see here is um, the correlation coefficient of the severity of fatigue with the level of these antibodies we analyzed. And in dark, uh, the dark columns represent um, the uh, patients fulfilling um, the uh, Canadian criteria for MECFS and the gray are the patients not fulfilling the criteria. So we found a correlation of several of these antibodies, including adrenergic antibodies and muscarine acetylcholine antibody receptors, but also angiotensin with the severity of fatigue. Looking into cognitive impairment, we had a different picture. Here only um, antibodies to um, PA and uh, CX3 receptor and stabilin um, did correlate with severity of cognitive impairment, pointing probably to an inflammatory mechanism. And um, again, only in those who have the full um, clinical picture of MECFS, but not in the others. And most strikingly is many of the post-COVID patients actually present with renal symptoms. And here we found a strong correlation in those, again, with the MECFS phenotype, and the strongest was for the beta-2 receptor antibody, which we uh, have been studying for a while in post-infectious MECFS and have evidence already that it's impaired in its function. So um, uh, we did also some studies on endothelial function in these patients, and to sum up our studies, which are also published already, is that in these um, young patients um, uh, following six months after COVID, we have already evidence for endothelial dysfunction by a technique, the endopet analysis, where we analyze the function of the capillaries in the fingers. We um, find various um, endothelial biomarkers altered. Um, most remarkably is that endothelin levels are upregulated in both of these cohorts, indicating hyperperfusion of um, endothelial vessels and we also um, could uh, observe that sera from this patient does impair nitric oxide um, um, mediated um, pathways um, when studying them in vitro in endothelial cells. So to sum up our findings, um, we um, know that MECFS is part of the post-COVID syndrome using the strict Canadian consensus criteria, tree protein coupled receptor antibodies are associated with symptom severity in post-COVID MECFS, and our data point to endothelial dysfunction and hyperperfusion as a pathomechanism in a post-COVID MECFS. This um, slide is to acknowledge my um, co-workers and our funding antibodies were um, determined with the essays from Cell Trend and um, this is um, our fatigue center at Charité, where we have um, a site. We um, provide a lot of information for patients and physicians and also have um, regularly um, educations. Thank you.